What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Real Grey Tall Geese EW from Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Not sure if it is the manga or the anime, but I'm going to say it's the manga because everything appears in mangas, but here it is, the Tall Geese in its glory. So, yep, a small kit because, yep, Mobile Suit from the 90s are small, and to be honest, this guy looks, well, amazing. Like... I know I say this for all kits, but this guy just really has like not that much detail, but yet it still pops from the shelf because first of all, the night motif, second of all, is not a Gundam with the gloss white, and where is the like like non-gloss white? I think it's in the waist over here. Like primarily, this is gloss white, and there is some two-tone white going on or all around the body that, well, due to the lighting issues, I can't see, but. Anyways, the gloss white looks awesome. All in all, the build, well, it is not that bad because everything is just done within one page. So, it still gets a little bit tedious from time to time, but it is actually not a long build. I actually only took like three hours to complete this kit. Because, well, mainly because of the backpack, it has so many mechanics inside of the backpack. Or much, I don't know grammar mistakes I don't care so yeah this guy is just looking awesome seam line wise not really that much to be honest I was gonna complain about the arms over here but they just hit it so well that I do not really care so this guy is just looking awesome so for stickers you have the decal sheet but the only visible ones from a straight build is the visor because the visor comes in a clear, just plain old clear rubber plastic. So you need to put on the blue, metallic blue on the visor to make it look accurate. But all in all, it just looks pretty good. So there are some stickers that they tell you to put on during the build, like the ones in here. Because they would be unreachable after you completed the build. I did that as well, so... Yep, but you can't see them anyway, so it's I think it's kind of a pointless thing to do. But anyways, that is it. Finally, an update to the 144 Tall Geese after so many years. For the articulation of this kit, the head can go up and down, rotate. It is not on like a double joint, so it cannot go forward and back to the chicken neck, which is kind of a bummer. The arms are on like double hinge inside so they can kind of pull out and, and just flip out like this. And they can rotate until everything collides with each other. The shoulder armor can move up and down. The arms can go up and down. Rotation above the elbow. A double jointed elbow. It looks simple but yet it looks so amazing. So just look at the armor separation. A simple frame can do such an amazing work at armor separation. I really have no words to describe it, but the only bummer is it cannot go straight. It's kind of like in a angle over here, but well, it's just not that uh, obvious to the eye, so it's whatever. And then the waist can rotate, the stomach can crunch front, and there's a clip over here for some reason similar to the Unicorn Gundam. That allows it to crunch back. So if you do not want the crunching, just lock it back into place. I don't know why that's there. I don't know whether to describe it as good or bad, but it's there, it's there. So you can do some more poses with the crunching backwards. So it is very, very good at crunching. Front skirts can move. Well, front skirts can move. Which actually triggers the thruster movement. So look at this. It's semi-automatic. Which is kind of good. And then the side skirts are on the are pegged onto the legs. The back skirts can move a little bit. The legs have that kind of a joint where it allows it to go forward. But it is so not obvious. That I really can't show on camera. And due to the thick thighs as well. Treat it as a sexual euth euthanism. I don't care what you think. So the legs can go forwards, 
backwards, outwards, and this freaking thing pops off. So let's do it on this side. So it cannot really do that much outwards because of the limitations for the sizers pegging into the thighs. So, yep, sideways is all right at best. And then a double jointed knee. So in the instructions, it doesn't seem so much is happening, but look at this. Look at this. Still, not much is going on, but I really like how the armor separates here. Really, really nice. And I just need to pack this thing back on. The feet can go forwards and back. Side to side, everything's falling off. Rotate. And then the toes can move up and down. And then the backpack. The mechanics I'm going to explain later in the accessory session. So for now, it can only go up and down, rotate at the base. Rotate up and down at over here. And do a little bit of a rotation. Because it is pegged upwards in the torso. So all in all, articulation is pretty good for t for the tall geese. Since it is kind of a, like a knight motif, it really, really needs all this articulation. And especially to get around when these guys are deploying the thrusters. So, well, articulation is pretty good. For the accessories... Let's do the gimmicky stuff first. So, you have an opening cockpit over here. One flap, that's it. And then, you have a figure of Zetches. Looking nice. And then, you have some different hands. So, except for the fists you have over here, you have open hands. You have trigger finger hands, which is basically the holding hands. And an angled right trigger finger hand. So the first accessory you get is the Dober gun. So the Dober gun looks kind of like a long rifle, kind of like a sniper rifle. So it has like this rotating base over here. The handle can rotate. And then the support handle can rotate towards one direction only. And then this part can move, the barrel can extend and retract, this part can extend and retract. And then you can remove the clip. But there's nowhere to store it, but so it, it really has no point anyway. So for this arm over here, you attach it onto the shoulders. But first it has, it can rotate at the base, rotate on the arm over here and then it can rotate over here and then rotate over here so this gun is pegged onto the right shoulder by opening up this flap just stick it in well just stick it in and here you go I'm really not sure how it should look like when it's stored but I can get an idea of just how it looks like right now. Yeah, I think it is flipped towards the back. So, in order for the tall geese to hold it, grab the trigger finger hand and just basically set it, set the gun up. Well, might as well detach it, why not? So, you rotate this out, rotate the handle accordingly, split the hand and the peg is inside the hand, so yep. This guy does not have any articulate finger hands. I don't know if it is a good or a bad thing, but it just depends on your judgment. Just peg the hand back together. Peg it back onto the arm over here. And then detach this manipulator and just fiddle around with the joints until you get the hand to fit inside. It's kind of a finicky thing to do, especially when the armor parts will just fall off or you try to tug it. But anyways, here is the Dober gun in action. Looking awesome. And then, and then you have the shield. Well, typical round shield for a knight. Two beam sabers at the bottom, movable handle. The arm can rotate over here, rotate over here, rotate at, over here, and rotate at the base. And then the beam saber holsters can flip out. 
And are these missiles over here? Like in the gray slits? I'm not sure. Haven't watched the full Gun and Wing series yet. So, it just basically uh, goes into the other hole over here. There's no way of flipping this up to to make it compact, but it's alright just hanging there. And if you want the toggies to hold it, grab the other hand. And the handle does not have any pegs or whatnot, so yeah, you just kind of had to you just kind of had to uh, just feed the hand through, try to close it up, and uh, and remove the manipulator. Fiddle around with it again and uh, just basically peg the hand back into the arm. It's kind of okay, but I'm just still a little bit annoyed about the position it is in. But anyways, so last but not least, we have the beans they restored in the shield. So they can be flipped out, tugged, pulled out. And then you have four beams, a set of clear beams, which... Well, great for customization and whatnot. And then you have a set of pink beams. Which is pretty good because, well, with the pink beams, anime accuracy, with the clear beams, customization. So, yep, there you have it. And then you have the vernier pack, which is really, really complicated with what's going on in there. So, to deploy the thrusters, you need to open up these two parts first, and then open up the bottom. And do you see this little tab over here? Bandai tells you to pull it down, but it's only gonna wear down your fingernail. So what I do to cheese this mechanic is to tug onto the thrusters over here, and it opens up this part. And then you just tug the thrusters down with the wings, and then just open up the wings. And here you have it. Well, position the thrusters however you like. I really don't care. Well, it is deployed. And it just looks very, very awesome. And here you have it. All the thrusters are deployed. Well, with a mini, mini wingspan. It makes the toggies more spiced up. If anything else. If that is not enough, you have thrusters on the back skirt. So you can just flip them out. It's pegged onto a ball joint in the top of the skirt. So, yep. And then use the front skirt and pull out the thruster there. And then you can flip out the side skirts. Flip them open. And then you will have everything, every single thruster on this kit deployed. So this guy just looks like a monster when everything is opened up. And it looks really, really speedy too. It is a nice implementation to implement so many mechanics within this kind of a small pack. At the same time making it look awesome and not fall off. So this guy, yep, it does successfully continue the trend of being a sturdy real grade kit after the Unicorn Gundam. This guy's parts are not going anywhere. And there are so many mechanics inside. Yet, it does not fall off at all. It just kind of just goes out of position, which is to be expected with an opening pack like that. But anyways, this guy, with all the accessories, looks awesome, and it's sturdy as hell. So that is the accessories for the Toggies EW. So, for comparisons, the only thing I can think of is the real great Wing Gundam Katoki. Because these guys are like rivals in the original Wing Gundam series, isn't it? But, but well, put on the decals on this guy and you would have a very, very well duo on your shelf. So that is it for the review of the Real Great Toggies. Tell me what you think of the kit in the comments below. And whether you would recommend it to a friend and whatnot. And yep, for me, I would recommend this to a friend. And especially it is not... A typically hard real grade to build and yet it is so sturdy really if someone is gonna dive into real grade sooner or later and he or she is just a beginner I would recommend this kit to them so 
Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and also subscribe for more model reviews, gunplay news, and all that kind of stuff. And subscribe to the feature channel on my channel page if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out, guys. Bye-bye.